Hello and welcome back to the Sparkling Autos YouTube channel. This week I'm testing another product from AutoGlim which is their quick and easy ceramic protection rapid ceramic spray. So this is a product designed for people who may not have the time, knowledge or experience to apply a proper ceramic coating and according to the bottle should provide up to three months protection. Now of course it says up to because there are a considerable number of variables here. Not least is the fact that there are actually two different application methods on the instructions in the bottle. And what I'm going to do in this video is split the bonnet in half, not literally, obviously, and apply one side of it with the wet application method and the other side dry. And without wasting any more time, let's just get on with it. So as you can see here, the bonnet has absolutely no protection on it whatsoever, thanks mainly to the Autobrite Direct Decon shampoo used in my most recent video. Make sure to look that one up if you haven't done so already. After this one, of course. And following the instructions as closely as I can, I'm going to give one side of the bonnet three sprays with it. Now the instructions do specify to use the Autoglim Insta Dry Towel. I don't have one of those, so what I'm using is a really plush microfiber towel, which in theory should do exactly the same job. So what I'm doing is spreading the product and soaking up a lot of it at the same time. And then I'm going to ground with a clean, dry microfiber towel and buff it off to a dry finish. Now I'm not applying any masking tape here or going for a scientific exact 50-50 on the bonnet. I think the bonnet is large enough in this car that if there is a difference between the two methods it's going to be plainly obvious which is which. Having said that, to reduce the risk of cross contamination I am going to rinse off any overspray of product that went onto what's going to be the dry side before I do proceed with that method. And of course before I even do that I'm going to have to dry it off. There we are then, the panel's nice and dry and ready to go in with the more traditional dry application method. Now for anybody who's unfamiliar with a ceramic spray as opposed to just using a traditional quick detailer type of product, the application process isn't too dissimilar, the only difference being that with your ordinary detail sprays you'll spray the product on and then wipe it with a cloth which will either buff it off or it'll flash off instantly. With your ceramic spray type products what you're actually doing with the initial wipe is leveling the product out and then you can either flip the cloth over or use another dry cloth to then buff it off. Now sometimes these products can appear a little bit streaky. All you need to do in that case, which I did off camera, is just get a slightly damp cloth and just go over it again. And as you can see here, you're left with a nice clean glossy finish. Now later in the video I want to do a 10 day update but for now I just want to try a couple of different things whilst I have this product out. Now I've used quite a few spray and rinse style sealants in the past. Some of which you may have even seen on the channel. Now I do appreciate the convenience in using these, particularly in the winter months. They're very handy, there's not a lot of effort involved. But this particular method where spraying it on and spreading it and then buffing it off, I'm not sure how I feel about that because really you're just diluting the protection before you've even given it a chance to bond. And I appreciate that would be a small price to pay if you were saving a lot of time, but I don't really see where the time is being saved either. So I'm trying something a little bit different here, which was to spray the product on spread it around with the soft cloth and then instantly rinse it off. And even following this perhaps unorthodox method, you can see straight away that this has obviously applied some protection to the car. The water is sheeting off straight away, whereas beforehand the paintwork was absolutely flat. But again, I don't think I'm really gaining any huge benefit by this method, so I think for the rest of the car I'm just going to go with the traditional spray on and buff off. Now that that's done, we're going to skip forward 10 days, or in your case, a few seconds. So 
So here we are then, 10 days later, the car is a little bit dusty, a little bit dirty. But given that, according to the bottle I used, it has some ceramic protection now, it should clean up easy enough. And if we look at the test area itself, it's a little bit dusty, but it doesn't look particularly bad. So let's get it hosed down and we'll see what difference there is either side, if indeed there is any difference. Now upon first inspection it definitely looks as though the right hand side as we look at it seems to have slowed down a little compared to the left but at the same time both sides do seem to be offering some protection however we'll take a closer look and just see how much difference there actually is. I should point out here to anybody unfamiliar with the channel that the machine I'm using is the AVA P80 which puts out 600 litres per hour so even on the left hand side here this machine is doing its best to absolutely flood the panel and the water is just disappearing almost instantly. Whereas the other side is definitely considerably slower getting out of the water. However as I've mentioned in previous protection tests it could just be clogged up so we'll get it all cleaned up and see if that makes any difference. Now don't worry, I'm not discussing or testing any other products here, so I'm going to fly through this very quickly. I've done a quick pre-wash on the car and I'm now washing it down with a pure shampoo, so nothing with any waxes, sealants or ceramic boosters in there. Nothing that's going to interfere with the test. And as I get the last of that shampoo residue rinsed away, you can see that whilst the right hand side has sped up a little bit in terms of its water sheeting, it certainly isn't performing anywhere near as well as the other side. And as I put the water onto higher pressure and rinse it again, it's plainly obvious there's a visible difference. So if you want it to last longer, it looks like it's best to go and dry with this one. And as always, that only leaves one question. And there we are then. Now I never really had any doubt from the start of this one that it was going to be on the shelf. My real question was going to be which method was I going to prefer, the dry method or the wet method? Now obviously this is just my personal preference but I think going forward I'll be sticking with the dry one for this. However, you can make up your own mind, you might find it easier to go with the wet application method. Entirely up to you, your car, your choice. And that really is all I have to say about that one. Again, as always, if you've made it this far, I really appreciate you taking the time to watch the video. I'll hopefully see you in the next one, and take care.